Hello and welcome to this demonstration of LoRa radios being tested in an urban environment. In this video, I set up two Adafruit LoRa radio transceivers to talk to one another and then take a walk through downtown Tucson to see how well they perform. For those of you who are new to LoRa, it provides a means of sending very small packets of data over relatively long distances using a licensed radio frequency at no cost. The fact that this data can be transmitted, received, and interpreted through libraries available for Arduino opens up some real interesting possibilities for remote environmental monitoring, which is my area of interest. In this demonstration, I'm using an Adafruit RFM 95W LoRa transceiver breakout with a cheap Arduino clone as my transmitter. And I'm also using an Adafruit Feather MO with an embedded RFM 95 LoRa radio as my receiver. Both radios operate in the 900 megahertz radio band, which is what's licensed by the FCC for use with LoRa where I live here in the United States. The reason I went with the transceiver breakout for my transmitter is that it's easy to integrate with a Raspberry Pi, which I hope to experiment with down the road. And the reason I went with the Adafruit Feather MO is that this particular form factor makes it extremely simple to incorporate an OLED screen for feedback while it's in the field, which I will demonstrate in a future video. To help improve telemetry, I'm also using the simple 900 MHz antenna kit offered by Adafruit. So why am I interested in LoRa? Well, as a hydrologist for the Arizona Department of Environmental Quality, I'm involved in monitoring stormwater and ephemeral washes. My agency collects stormwater samples in order to understand potential sources of contamination and important drainages fed by these washes. Fixed monitoring sites requiring sample collection may be distributed throughout the watershed. And given the arid nature of our region, these washes may not always be flowing with water. This can translate into wasted time and resources when I'm out in the field collecting samples. In response, I've been playing with open source hardware for developing inexpensive remote environmental monitors that communicate with the Internet of Things over cellular and satellite networks. You can find more details in the description of this video. The idea behind my hardware is to communicate field conditions and ephemeral washes to cell phone towers. In turn, these towers can post data to the Internet of Things on platforms like ThingSpeak. I've tested one prototype successfully, so the technology has potential, but I also recognize that all those cellular subscriptions and data transmission costs can get expensive when multiplied over a watershed. A more efficient way of doing things is by communicating field conditions from several sites via radio to a central location, which in turn can post field condition parameters via cellular or satellite technology. In this way, I can send data collected throughout the watershed to the Internet of Things using only one cellular or satellite subscription, thus cutting down on costs significantly. Again, as per the description on Adafruit's website, the low bandwidth associated with these radios allows them to transmit data over very long distances, depending on environmental and hardware factors. Since I'm not an expert in radio telemetry, I don't know if Flora is really going to meet my needs, so this video summarizes my first experiments with the same. Getting back to my transmitter and receiver, Adafruit has posted code on its website that supports programming this hardware. For my simple tests, I've simply copied that code and uploaded it to the respective hardware. My only modifications to Adafruit's code are specific to the pinouts used for each hardware unit. No other changes are made. Links to the code uh, used in these experiments are available on my website, and I'll include a link in the description of this video. The following maps and videos summarize my simple experiments. In these experiments, I'm just going to test the range in downtown Tucson in order to give me a worst case scenario of how I might expect this hardware to perform in Arizona's rural watersheds with no special antennas or other tuning considered. For my experiment, I placed my transmitter in a fourth floor window of my work building, and I'll take my receiver with me as I walk around the building and city streets. During the experiment, I'll determine if packets are being received and what the RSSI signal is at the given location, and I'll follow each experiment with a map showing the distance between the transmitter and receiver and the result. 
As a side note, RSSI stands for Receive Signal Strength Indicator and is an indication of the power level being received by the receive radio in decibels. Therefore, the higher the RSSI number, the stronger the signal. In my experiments, I'll be shooting for an RSSI of negative 80 or higher as a best case scenario. Okay, and this is my LoRa set up as a receiver in my office. Um, I'm four floors beneath where the transmitter is currently set up, and it looks like it's working okay. Okay, now I'm out on Alameda Street, directly underneath um, where that transmitter is, is set up in the building. I'm gonna look up towards the top of the building. So just to give you a general idea, it's on the fourth floor in one of those windows right now. And you can see from the blinking light that it is receiving okay. So now I've walked a couple, couple blocks um, down Granada and I'm just about a block south of St. Mary's. Here's my building out here in the background. And the receiver is working. I am getting a reply. It goes in and out a little bit. It looks like I'm starting to test the limits of the range. But it is working. So that's pretty impressive for a little radio receiver that can talk to an Arduino, this really opens up some possibilities. So here I am, I'm back at uh, Granada and Alameda, and I figured I should, might as well get a picture of what the RSSI looks like on this thing. So there it is. Okay, and I'm back on the fourth floor. I'm looking out the window. That's the street I walked down, off in that direction towards 6. And this thing is still transmitting. I can tell from the flashing light right there. This thing, though, occasionally what I notice with this hardware is it just locks up. And uh, I don't know the reason why, I guess I'll have to write some error handling for that, but one way to fix it is just to and that resets it, opening up the serial monitor. Seems to get it to work okay, and you can see my IRS, my RSSI is very low right now, which is not surprising since I'm only a few feet away from the transmitter. I wonder what would happen if I walked down that street over there. I guess I'll have to try that next, but that's about all I have time to do today. Okay, so this is day two of me uh, playing with this little uh, LoRa transmitter. I've got the receiver downstairs. On my first attempt, I actually walked up that street right there. And as you can see, I've got this big building that was uh, causing some visibility line of sight issues. So um, I got pretty far regardless um, uh, for my purposes, but now what I want to do is since I've got this place right here, I want to head up this street and see what, um, see what kind of reception I can get um, considering that I have better visibility. Let's see what happens. A couple blocks up from my building, it's kind of hidden behind that tree, you can't really see it. But I've set this thing up on a bench to see how, how well it does. And uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to get this in the screenshot, but the RSSI at this location is about negative 72, which is pretty impressive. So it's looking good. Okay, now I'm just east of Stone, which is down there, and of course I can't see the building. Um, but I do get an RSSI of about negative 78 when I pick this little antenna up and uh, bring it up a few feet off the ground. It's not receiving anything while it's on the ground. 
I should also mention that when this is receiving, when I'm standing in the street over there, uh, you know, to kind of improve the line of sight, it's pretty intermittent. It, when, the, uh, when the signal comes through, it comes through pretty strong, but uh, it, it doesn't come through as frequently as when I have better line of sight. And the building is way down that street. I can't really, uh, I can't really see the building at all. But even with this little receiver here on the ground, it is um, able to transmit and receive at about negative 96 RSSI. So you can't see that on the screen, but it is working. So that's pretty impressive. Okay, so this is my uh, latest location. And my building is right behind the federal building, which is that big brown block down the street. This is where I'm located, right off of 6th and Pennington. It's a different line of sight. I'm on a different street. And even if I bring that little uh, receiver up into the street and uh, try to improve my line of sight by standing out here, I can't get any, uh, can't get any signal or uh, any response. So. Good information. So the ranges I came up with in my experiments were significantly less than what I was initially hoping for based on the description of the hardware. However, I have to take into consideration that I was not using a directional antenna, nor was I dealing with a clear line of sight in my experiments. As such, I think the radios actually perform relatively well. Needless to say, I, I think the ranges can be improved with a little tweaking. Adafruit does point out that range can be impacted by a lot of variables and even provides a section that gives you some ideas on how you can improve range uh, moving forward. I should clarify that I'm not a radio engineer and have approached these experiments from the point of view of someone who knows very little about LoRa. Having said that, I can recommend this excellent YouTube series prepared by this individual. I don't want to mispronounce his name, suffice it to say that he describes himself as the guy with the Swiss accent in his series, and his videos are highly rated and I've enjoyed them thoroughly. I can also recommend the learning series posted by Adafruit for their LoRa hardware, links for which I'll include in the description of this video. I hope you found these experiments uh, interesting and useful, and if you'd like updates, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.